we have um, we have three different types of exercise that I'm going to talk about. Okay. We've got aerobic, mm-hmm. which is your long runs. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's around sixty percent of your maximum heart rate. Everyone should be doing this. By the way, we have so many studies that suggest that even walking can improve brain health. What's the? Isn't there like math you can do? Like your age divided by something is like what your heart rate should be. Yeah, it's a e- really easy way. It, it, it's two twenty minus your age will be your maximum heart rate. Two twenty minus your age is yeah. your maximum heart rate. So okay. let's just say arguments say you're twenty years old. That means your maximum heart rate should be twenty. Twenty. I oh, so it should be two hundred. Yeah. Right. So then you can say, well, okay, great. Well, if I want to look at sixty five percent of my maximum heart rate, you'll do sixty five percent of two hundred. Okay. All right. But we're becoming more savvy now. We've got heart rate monitors. We've got ways of measuring our maximum heart rate, right? So your aerobic training is you're running, you're long running, you're long cycling, you're long swimming. This does amazing things. One, we have a lot of blood flow. Now, I think that's the key here. We have to remember if we what what's good for the heart is good for the brain. So every time we are getting more blood flow to the brain, we're getting oxygen and nutrients. That's what we want for survival, right? And I have a theory that dementia is just a disease of the vascular system. That makes sense. Okay. Well, Alzheimer's disease is a disease of the vascular system. Mm -hmm. So we want, so we have, you know, let's just take a a bit of an anatomy course right now. We've got our heart and we've got this big chamber called the aorta. Mm -hmm. From the aorta, we've got these two branches that go up into the brain. We've got the carotid arteries. Let's sit right here. Then we've got the vertebral arteries. Okay, they sit here. They go up. Obviously, we've got two on one on each side. They go up mm-hmm. into the brain. Then we've got branching off of that. So they're the two main arteries that go into the brain. There's a lot of blood flow that happens that gets delivered in there. And then we've got these little capillaries as well. They're the they're about a hairline thick, one cell thick. These arteries have these walls around them that are made of muscle. Right? So it's important for them to stay healthy and strong to deliver more blood. When we are doing aerobic physical activity, we are strengthening the arteries through blood flow. We're strengthening the heart. We're getting something called cardiac remodeling. You can remodel your entire cardiac system through exercise. But what we are getting the most beneficial effect is we're getting the release of something called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. So it is a growth factor for the brain, and that is the specific growth factor that will grow new neurons in the hippocampus. So these studies all came out first using mice. So in around 1999, mm-hmm. they did the fir- you know some of the first studies on mice. They got them to wheel run, right. and they were determining what this does in terms of brain health. And they found, oh my gosh, these mice grow new neurons in the hippocampus of their brains through the 20 minutes of wheel running per day. But what they also do is they grow new neurons in all of the areas in the brain. Wow. This was just on mice, right? We're not we're not rodents. But that was 1999. So mm-hmm. they thought, scientists were like, this is unbelievable, right? So then they fast-tracked. Then in the early 2000s, they wanted to replicate this in humans. So they replicated the exact same study. And what they found was that humans can't grow new neurons, only in the hippocampus. Only in the hippocampus. But they did find that they can get better connectivity in the hippocampal subregions. So just better connectivity of the neurons in the areas around the brain. They thought that was good. So this was all from aerobic training, right? Specifically around 65% of maximum heart rate. Mm -hmm. So that's when the 2000s were all about BDNF. Mm -hmm. Everyone was talking. I even remember back in, you know, in the early 2000s, there was news articles coming out saying BDNF. Everyone loved it, right? And ever since then, this gets back to your question earlier, pharmaceutical companies are trying to replicate BDNF to try and bottle it up because if you go, right, if we go into a, a mice, a, a mouse and just inject BDNF into their brain, they're just going to grow a bigger brain, right? Likewise, if we can inject BDNF in a pharmaceutical grade agent into your hippocampus, you, you're going to have a bigger hip, hippocampus. We can see that wow. because the more you exercise, the better your hippocampus. But what would the downside be of just injecting it or taking well, we can't. the supplement? You don't yeah. know. We can't. Well, we're never going to be able to do that, which is why exercise serves as medicine. 
Mm. Exercise is by far, and I want this like to really go out there, it is by far the best therapeutic agent that can starve off neurodegenerative diseases and the aging process. Now, what if you're somebody who has neglected this your whole life and now you're in your mid thirties, mid forties, whatever it might be. If you start doing this, is this something that you can reverse if you have some sort of there is no reversal, right? Fuck. Okay. But we have to keep in mind around 25 to 30, that's when your brain fully develops. Mm -hmm. Around 30, then your brain begins to atrophy in small amounts. Now, atrophy is decrease in muscle cell size, mm -hmm. right? Or decrease in cell size, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you start to get, you start to kill off neurons at the age of 30. It's just due to the natural brain aging process. We can see, right? We can see the MRI of a, 25 year old brain and it's nice and thick near the skull right there's just a thin layer of fluid between the the brain and the skull and then you can see the brain of a 90 year old and then that that space is really thick between the skull right. and the brain because the brain atrophies right exercise along with other interventions proper nutrition proper hydration and um and sleep of course can slow the progression Mm, just of helps these you maintain age related diseases. You're not going to reverse it. You can't reverse Alzheimer's disease, unfortunately. But you can slow the progression and prevent Alzheimer's disease mm. from occurring. But you would think with like the heart remodeling and getting those uh arteries that go up to your brain by like opening those up and making your heart stronger that that would you would think that that would help, no? Yeah. Well, I mean of it, would, it would for the time being, but you would think that that would sort of help like repair mm. but not it's exactly. not that's not the case because let me tell you something else that happens these arteries so we've got arteries which are the big ones that mm -hmm. have got the muscles then we've got veins mm -hmm. which are just one directional pumps then we've got these little capillaries or you say in america america capillaries right. these little capillaries are the first things to go in any type of insult all right or they're the first things to go in hypertension so if you've got blood pressure, high blood pressure, right? What happens is your high blood pressure over time ends up killing off these tiny little blood vessels, these tiny little capillaries. They end up dying. So what happens if you kill off the, cap the capillaries in your brain? Over time, you've got less oxygen and less nutrients mm -hmm. going to the brain. We've probably, you and I have probably killed them off. I know like, you know, yeah, I didn't start paying attention to any kind of exercise or health. Though. I mean, I, I worked out, went to the gym when I was in my teens and 20s, but I never paid attention. To, I ate shit and yeah. like never did cardio mm -hmm. until like recently, honestly. Well, cardio, like I said, it's absolutely phenomenal. And by back to this whole chamber of the heart, mm -hmm. what you want is to be able to with each, you want to increase your stroke volume. So with each pump, right, let's just say your your heart contracts and then it pumps blood with each pump you want to with less efficacy so you want to be able to have as much blood flow as possible right mm -hmm. that's if you've got a strong chamber if that chamber which is the aorta and all of the other arteries if they weaken every time you do that one pump maybe not enough blood will go up all right so it's about efficacy as well so the more you train that chamber of the heart mm -hmm. the stronger it gets the walls of the artery become stronger. Therefore, it can push more blood more forcefully with each contraction. And that's what we want because we want less heartbeats with greater volume of blood. Right. Right. right? So that's what aerobic activity does. And it's really devastating that 30% of Americans don't meet the necessary requirements of cardio vascular fitness which is 150 minutes a week yeah no way <laughs> not even sorry close. i should say no that was only 30 percent so 70 percent of the u.s population don't meet how many minutes per week 150 150 i only do like 20 minutes every other day yeah. so like 80 minutes a day on the, i have just one of those assault bikes you know mm-hmm I only do that for like 20 minutes every other day. That's pretty short of the yeah. quota. And that's, and by the way, an assault bike, you're probably actually getting out of the aerobic zone. That's a, that's hard. No, I stay, I stay right at like 130, 135. Okay. My well, heart rate. Depending on your, 
I try I, to take it easy. If I go if I go normal, like I'll get up to like in the one forties, but I try to keep it kind of low, like zone two. Well, for everyone listening, if you're thinking, okay, well, Louise, I don't know what my what my thresholds are, mm-hmm. right? The way to think about it is the best training zone for this this aerobic zone is when you know that you're working out, right? You're you've got a bit of a sweat, but you can have a conversation with somebody. So your heart is pumping. Right, okay. You know, you know you're working. It's like when you're working on an incline of a treadmill, right? You can feel it, but you could still have the conversation with somebody. Right, right. That's where you want to aim to in uh, 20 minutes a day. 